So back in December 2024, there was an FCC filing for something from Hasselblad and that's the HB722 and it's scheduled for launch in June of 2025 and that will be the official name of the Hasselblad X2D Mark II. Now the biggest changes according to some of the rumours that have been floating around for the past month or so is that there will be a LiDAR assisted autofocus system built into the camera. This is similar to the DJI Focus Pro solution that they have that will help any camera um, manually or rather automatically focus manual focus lenses. Now this will be built into the X2D Mark II itself. So in order to have a good idea of what they're going to introduce to the X2D Mark II over the existing X2D, we've got to look at what Hasselblad did to the original X1D when they moved to the X1D Mark II. So what happened then? Now a few things stayed the same. The 50 megapixel stayed the same. The ISO sensitivity stayed the same. 2.3 frames per second of shooting speed, the weight and size as well as the battery system also stayed the same. So what were the changes when they moved from the X1D to the X1D Mark II? There was a bigger screen. So the screen size from the X1D Mark II is actually the same size as what is available on the X2D today. It's a 3.6 inch high resolution, 2.36 megapixel resolution screen, which is a joy to use, right? And there was also a higher resolution EVF. It moved from 2.36 megapixel to 3.69 megapixel. There was also video functionality, video taking capabilities in the X1D and the X1D Mark II, which improved from Full HD to 2720 by 1530 pixels. And the color also changed slightly when moving from the X1D to the X1D Mark II. Color as in the color of the body. So the next thing we really got to think about is what did the X2D bring to the X1D Mark II? So this was the major upgrade from X1D to the X1D Mark II. Small upgrade, major update, X1D Mark II to the X2D. So a few things happened, right? They took away the video functionality. There were no headphone outputs, no mic inputs anymore. There was no longer any GPS built in and it shot faster at 3.3 frames per second. The weight and the size, it was both heavier and bigger. The ISO range went down to ISO 64 instead of the base of ISO 100. There was an even higher resolution EVF at 1x magnification and it was now standing at 5.76 megapixel. Now the sensor, which is the big thing, it moved from 50 megapixel to 100 megapixel and it was reserved for a big major upgrade to the system. Now then there was also the top LCD that you see here, which wasn't there in the previous cameras. Um, of course, the next thing is image stabilization. There's a seven stop IBIS in body image stabilization, not on the lens, on the body itself in the X2D, which is a big deal, right? It really allows handheld shots in a lot of situations. The screen also now tilts. There are two degrees of tilts, 40 and 70 degrees, but um, it's not a full articulating, so you can't flip it to the side or all the way to the front so that you can see it from the front. You won't be able to do that. There was also a built-in one terabyte of storage, super fast SSD storage. And instead of using UHS2 SD cards, where there were two of them, it's now dropped to one slot, but it takes a CF Express Type B slot instead. The USB was also upgraded to a faster 10 gigabits per uh, second variant and there was a faster shutter and flash sync speed that moved up from 1 over 2000 to 1 over 4000 on the X2D. The dynamic range on this camera went up to 15 stops on the X2D over the 14 stops in the previous camera and it introduced face detect autofocus, face as in P-H-A-S-E. Right now, this X2D, the firmware has been upgraded to enable actual human face detect autofocus as well. And it also allowed tethering to an iPad through the USB port. The price at that time, it dropped from about 9,000 to sub 6,000, which was a welcome standout. So today, 
what can really make the X2D stand out? I would think there are a couple of things, right? So like I mentioned before, you will need a faster processor. If you wanted Hasselblad noise reduction built into the camera as well as multi-shot, today you can do that for the Hasselblad natural noise reduction. You can perform that on your iPad, but it has to be on a separate device, not on camera. And you can also do multi-shot when you are tethered to the PC or the Mac. But that again, when you're merging four times one 100 or 6 times 100 megapixel images, it requires a lot of processing power and it's pretty slow. So you aren't able to do it on the camera itself. So you do need to tether in order to achieve these two functionalities. But if you want to enable it on camera, you do need a much faster processor, which will also reduce the readout speed and also improve auto focus functionality. Maybe you're going to be able to track more things over the entire 100 megapixel camera. And you will have enhanced eye detection and faster continuous shooting and maybe even enable global shutter, I don't know, right? So I would say that most of the focus in this upgrade to the X2D Mark II will be about speed, which will require a faster processor. So that's one of the things that will happen. And something that will actually have to be faster is the connectivity, right? So right now it is using a USB 3.2, right? It should, maybe, maybe they should move up to USB 4, or even 5 to enable 20 or 40 gigabits per second transfer speed. Now, when it comes to that kind of transfer speed, well, because you're trying to get one terabyte of stuff out of the built-in storage, you do need it quite fast. And uh, maybe that will also enable video recording or worst come to worst, maybe the USB output port itself will be able to connect to a PC in order to send out video signal. So you can use it maybe as a webcam, I don't know. And if they added connectivity in the form of a uh, HDMI port, that will be awesome, right? Maybe get video out from the HDMI port and uh, maybe add an audio in or audio out port on this, right? So you can monitor um, through your headphones if you're trying to record video. But all this is assuming that Hasselblad is going to move into video, which actually I think is unlikely to happen, which moves us to the next point of um, the LiDAR, right? So the LiDAR assisted autofocus. So that's the thing that is uh, most likely to launch together with um, the X2D Mark II. I would say that um, LiDAR is great, right? So DJI, uh, the LiDAR technology, they actually have a product that's made for it, which is the DJI Focus Pro. I think that's what it's called. So basically, it is a standalone LiDAR-enabled camera, uh, which will send signals to a control motor that will rotate the focus ring all right, on your manual lenses and help you achieve autofocus easily, even for manual control lenses. And that system is going to be built into the X2D Mark II. Um, the maximum distance will probably just at best go up to 20 meters, maybe 40 meters, depending on the version and the uh, power of the LiDAR that you're going to be using. But it might be quite limited. And if it is for short distances and you have a far longer lens, it might actually block out some because the LiDAR is going to be built right here, right? From the pictures that we see on the internet, it's going to be here. And you are going to have some limitations in terms of what you can track from the LiDAR built in on board because otherwise you have a separate LiDAR unit like what the DJI does, it is good because it will clear most lenses even if it is pretty long. So there's one more thing that I hope that Hasselblad does something about which is GPS, right? So when they moved to the X2D, they took out GPS. The X1D, they had GPS built on board. So I do a lot of landscape photography and then when I'm out tracking, especially in a country that I'm not familiar with, I do want the GPS so that I can track where I've been and I know exactly where the photo was taken. Right now, today, I actually use my iPhone to take a photo of the same place when I'm taking a photo so that I can track where it is, but it is cumbersome and not every photo is geotech. Now, even if the GPS is not built into the camera itself, maybe you can make some changes to the Focus mobile application and when it is linked, like how Leica does it, right? When, it's, when the Leica camera is linked to the Photos app on the phone, it actually reads the GPS information and embeds it into the photo files that you take. So this is great. Um, beyond that, I would say that uh, there are things that I don't think they will do for the X2D Mark II. And these are the things that they will likely reserve for the X3D, which probably won't come anytime soon. 
um, there will be talks of a 150 megapixel sensor. Uh, that, well, today 100 megapixel is still plenty. You're already getting files that are about 200 megabytes. A 150 megapixel sensor is probably going to throw you 300. So can you imagine one gigabyte, you can only take three photos. That is just insane. And the speeds that is required to do that in order to store almost one gigabyte um, for a frame rate of 3.3 second, 3.3 uh, frames per second is going to require a super fast storage already. Um, I would think that uh, maybe if they were going to ever introduce any video related stuff, including a HDMI or video taking capability or video out via the USB, they'll probably reserve it for the X3D and not for the X2D. Um, there could be a larger screen, although it's hard to phantom a screen that's larger than this current 3.6 already. This is already uh, something that's very, very impressive, right? Um, and I would say maybe global shutter, but global shutter for 150 megapixel, I cannot imagine the kind of processing power they're going to need. Um, maybe articulating screen, right? Again, articulating screen is mostly for videos. And if you really wanted to shoot yourself in a studio and you wanted to see what is um, happening, you could use the focus app that is on your mobile phone to actually monitor. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, I would say that EVF, EVF currently, the current size of the EVF, current resolution of the v EVF in the Hasselblad X2D is not class leading. The class leading ones are those in the Sony A1 Mark II, for example, which uses a 9.4 megapixel EVF. And that is crazy, right? Which refresh rate up to 240 frames per second on the EVF. So a very natural view. All right, so that is all we have for it. I have reached out to DJI, well, actually the retail store, and said that, look, if you have any cameras that's going to come out anytime soon, whatever the camera is, I'm going to insist that I get first dips and I want to get the camera. I'll buy the camera blind before their announcement, right? So be sure to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned if you want to know more about what's happening in the world of Hasselblad and Leica and any high-end photography equipment. And I'll see you in my next video.